Let's now take a look at a slightly different set of statements, and I want to ask you some questions. First, are we looking at an argument? Well, once again, let's apply the definition of an argument. An argument is premise plus conclusion. So do we spot a claim in this new set of statements that is supporting or is supported by some other claim? Now, I don't want you to think about how strong the support is, but just whether you can detect intent to support. You notice, of course, that the first statement remains unchanged. Not every mammal is suitable to keep as a pet. For example, tigers are very big and need a lot of attention. Once again, we have an argument where the first claim is the conclusion, the second claim is the premise, which attempts to support this conclusion. So yes, this is also an argument. Now, is it the same argument or is it a different argument? Well, one of the constituent parts of the argument is different, right? The conclusion is the same across these two arguments, but the premises are different, so they are different arguments, right? We're looking at two different arguments. Now, the next question I wanna ask has to do with assumption. Does this argument make any assumptions? Well, of course, once again, yes, it makes the same assumption about tigers being mammals, but this time we're looking at a slightly different second assumption. Right? Whereas in the first argument, this was the other assumption that we identify. Now we're looking at a very different assumption. Right? Now we're looking at this idea of an animal being big and needing lots of attention. That this somehow renders the animal not suitable to keep as a pet. Now let's consider the reasonableness of this assumption compared to the reasonableness of this assumption. And I think you start to see that this is a far less reasonable assumption. I'm not saying it's completely unreasonable, right? Because again, I don't know what is meant by suitability as a pet, right? Who am I talking about? What household? Like if you live in a studio apartment in New York City and you have a job where you need to be in the office for 16 hours a day, well, then an animal being very big and needing a lot of attention does in fact render it not suitable for you as a house pet. But on the other hand, if you live on a farm and you spend all day with your pets, then being big and needing a lot of attention all of a sudden doesn't seem to be a indicator of not suitable. Do you see what I mean? All we can really say is that compared to this assumption, this one is less reasonable. Now, this is a really important skill, the ability to evaluate the reasonableness of an assumption. A lot of students precisely get stuck here when they can't distinguish between different gradations of reasonableness. In other words, their theory of the LSAT is too simplistic. Their theory of the LSAT, and I mean, if you want to look at it under a microscope, the theory of what an assumption can be only allows for two possibilities either reasonable assumptions or unreasonable assumptions. And in their mind, every single assumption is straight up reasonable or not reasonable. But that's not really how assumptions work on the test. It's very difficult. I think it's actually impossible to draw that bright line distinction between on the one hand, reasonable assumptions, on the other hand, not reasonable assumptions. I wouldn't know where to put that line because I don't think that line exists. Rather, I think it's a gradation. It's a spectrum. On the one hand, you have totally reasonable assumptions. On the other hand, you have completely unreasonable assumptions. And there's just a lot of gray space in between. I think it's fair to say that this is less reasonable than this. And this is more reasonable. This is a really important point, which I'll come back to frequently when we discuss actual logical reasoning questions, in particular weakening questions and strengthening questions, where sometimes on the harder ones, you do have to evaluate the relative reasonableness of the assumptions that are being made in different answer choices. So returning now to this question, having identified the assumption that this argument makes and how this assumption is different from this assumption and furthermore, how this assumption is slightly less reasonable than this assumption, I think it's fair to say then this is the weaker argument, right? This is the weaker argument compared to this argument because you appeal to this definition, right? The strength of an argument depends on the reasonableness of its assumptions. The less reasonable the assumption, the weaker the argument is. And so this argument is weaker. Now, that might not sit right with some of you. Some of you might be thinking, what are you talking about? Tigers obviously are not suitable to keep as house pets. I don't care if they're big or if they need a lot of attention. 
First of all, tigers are endangered, so that's not suitable for you to keep as a house pet. Second of all, tigers are super dangerous. They're definitely not suitable to keep as a house pet. I'm not sure if you had those thoughts, but if you did, I want you to be aware of the fact that you had those thoughts. And now I want you to be aware of how utterly irrelevant those thoughts were. And if you feel a little bit bad about that, then that's good. If you thought like that, then what you did was you distracted yourself from the task of examining this argument. Notice that we weren't trying to prove that tigers are not suitable as house pets. We were simply evaluating this set of claims. First, we asked, is this an argument? Which means what? Which means we examine the set of claims and see if there's a statement in here that supports some other statement. The answer is yes. Next, we examined whether any assumptions were made in the argument, and we compared the assumptions that this argument made against the assumptions that some similar argument made. And we asked which assumption was more or less reasonable and therefore which assumption was stronger or weaker. And when I finally said that this argument was the weaker argument, I was not saying that tigers are therefore suitable to keep as pets. But you might have thought that that's what I was saying. That's a dangerous conflation. That's a conflation that the outside writers will take advantage of ruthlessly and punish you for it. 